Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. We are here live for the Reignite Your Soul podcast season two. And I am so excited. We are doing them here live on Instagram. Hello, hello. How's it going? We have our very first guest here on the podcast, Melissa Byers. And am I ever excited? Hi, Sylvia. Hi, everybody. Hope that you're all doing absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I did my makeup for you guys. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I'm going to join. I'd love to know where everyone is coming from. If you want to put it in the comments, where you're coming from in the world. Hey, girl. <laughs> this is so great. So Melissa and I haven't seen each other in so long. Yeah. And we just had a little phone call before hopping on this live. And I was like, I'm going to call you because... I want this to be like when the bride is walking down the aisle and it sees the groom for the first time. And I'm like, girl, you're looking fabulous. <laughs> and I was like, you better bring me that rose that you promised me. Okay. I did look. <laughs> Feeling it. Feeling it. <laughs> right? So <laughs> awesome. Since we've been out here, I think, you know, you and I haven't connected for quite some time. This just feels so, so yummy. yummy. So yummy. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. It's, um, I love our friendship because it's like, we kind of do that. And I'm like that with all of my good friends. It's like, we kind of like ebb and flow because we're all so fucking busy with life <laughs> and like flowing and like having like our personal lives and our businesses and all of this other stuff going on. And it's like, it's really nice when you can just flow with things and like check in and just be like, yo, like what is going on? How are things? Yeah. So we decided to do it live here on a podcast. <laughs> this is new to me too. I've never ever experienced anything like this before where you're actually bringing the podcast to Instagram. So I'm just curious how that's all going to unravel. And I'm excited that I am the first guests to attend this. So okay. I'm just excited to see this all unfold and unravel. And who knows where this is going to take us. <laughs> no, right. I honestly like I just had that random idea of doing that. I've had the idea for a while to do it like live here on Instagram because it's always so much more fun when you have people there in the comments engaging, asking questions. Like I feel like it just really gets the energy and the and the conversation going. So if you guys are in the comments, say hello. Let us know that you're here. And if you guys are catching the recording either on the podcast or on the YouTube, then you can come to the Instagram page, Laura at Laura Pahuda, and come and check out when the next live episode is going to be so you can watch it live and engage in the comments. And at the very end, we are going to be asking somebody to come on a request to join us live here on. And you can ask any questions. You can just join in on the conversation. It'll just be super fun. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, I would love to introduce the amazing Melissa Byers. And we've known each other, what, for like maybe six years now? Yeah, yeah. Six years now, yeah. In, in a minute, very, a lot of minutes, a lot of moments. <laughs> it has been a whole lot of moments. And <laughs> yeah, and, and we met kind of when we were um, in with Isogenics. Yeah. And it's been a long time since then. And <laughs> it's funny because even back then, like, I don't know, I feel like that was kind of my expanding moment into entrepreneurship. And it's been quite the freaking journey since then. And I'm just so excited that you're here. And it's been so nice seeing like how you have kind of transitioned into where you are, into where you are right now. And that was kind of like the expander into entrepreneurship. So I'm super happy that you're here. Melissa is like amazing, guys. She is just like so awesome. She's a master, was it mastery? Mastery method certified. Mastery method certified coach. Sorry, I messed that up. Um, and she's just amazing. So I'm excited for her to be here. You know me, I don't really like do things with labels. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really one for labels. I'm just like, she's an epic human. She has lots of wisdom to share. And we're just gonna have an epic chat. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. So do you want me to share my story? Do you want me to eat? I would love to, yeah. And how I transitioned over? For um, sure, yeah. So it, it's interesting story. Absolutely. And I'm sure that there'll be some value into it as well. So you know, I, I truly believe, at least for me, and I'm speaking for myself, is that I've always innately um, had this deep knowing that uh, entrepreneurship has been something um, for me. And, you know, it really, really started when I was a child. 
I would say I would, I would question absolutely everything. I would question adults. I would question my thoughts. I would question my environment. I would question my teachers. I guess you could put me in like the, the, the label of a rebel, I guess, if you want to identify mm -hmm. something, um, you know, but I've always had a lot of resistance around people and the way that they lived and the way that they saw life. And, you know, and, and I'd say back then, that was a part of me that denied, and I rejected it and I abandoned it. And as I evolved, I started to fall into the, the societal norm. Right. And I know a lot of us can speak for themselves when it comes to that. So mm -hmm. I kind of lost myself along the way. So when I was probably about, um, I was probably 19 years old when this started, um, I found this incredible man with great eyes, dark hair, I was absolutely in love with him. He was just, you know, I guess they call it the limerence we just fall in love. It's all the beginning. It's the nuance. It's it's the love. It's the excitement. And hi, Sasha. Hi, beautiful. <laughs> love that you're here. Um, you know, but what I noticed over time, and you know, there was a lot of patterns that were up in our relationship. And there were the, um, you know, domestic violence. And you know, as a result, I started to not feel worthy. And I had no idea what question anything I kind of just transitioned that and that's who I became identified myself with mm -hmm. and I kind of lost my along the way so I dated for for many 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 years. and it probably been until I was 26 years old and I had a child with this individual and um what happened was I remember this distinctly so I'm going to share this because I think there's so much beauty to this and I'll transition entrepreneurship I was 26 years old and uh, we're driving to uh, Montfort's Actually, I was driving to Mont and I remember my phone just blowing up over and over and over again and melt <laughs> it was just going over and over and over again and what happened is I, I remember parking in the parking lot and I'm looking down phone and there's just all these messages going on and on and on it's just like you know she's prettier than you and meeting someone else you're not worthy and it was just all of those scripts and those narratives that I've been living in for so many years and I remember just looking down at the phone and tears just started rolling down my eyes and mm -hmm. I just remember that moment so I just put my phone aside I got my Montford car and I drove to and at the time, my mother was actually um, watching my son living in a downstairs basement apartment. And my son was five years old at the time. And I went down to the basement and my mom looked at me and I had tears in my eyes. Honey, what's wrong? What's wrong? Something's wrong with you. And I said, no, 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 it's okay. And she's like, no, you know what, mom? I just need a minute. I just need a minute to myself. And come like, mommy, 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 like grabbing just needing my attention, right? Mommy's home, mommy's home. And I was like, one second, honey, one second. Obviously, understand what that looks like. So my mom took me aside, and I remember walking into the room. And at the time, my bedroom had a fireplace. And I remember just the messages going on and on and on and on and on. And I took this year after year, year after year. I remember sitting in the bed looking at my fireplace. And I just started crying. I just remember just like literally just putting myself in a ball, just rocking on my bed, like nonstop. And my mom's knocking on the door. I'm like, I'm okay, I'm okay. And it, it was just this one moment. And I remember this for the rest of my life. I know we all have these moments, right, where we just decide. And I remember looking at the fireplace. And, and I just said to myself, not anymore. Not anymore. And mm -hmm. you know, it's, there's a decision, but there's also a feeling. So all of a sudden, I just felt these feeling, these sensations just move through my body. And I just felt a release. I decided in the moment that I was never going back to this person. And I remember just wiping my tears off and just standing up, standing up like I've never stood up before. It was like this posture. I can't explain it. I wish it was like I had this posture. And I remember opening the door and my son's like calling at me. And I said, I just went down to him. I just looked at him. I said, everything's going to be okay everything's going to be okay. And from that day, I never, ever, ever went back. But listen to where it really started, where my entrepreneurship, where I started. Not yet, but I think 
<laughs> Not yet. I never went back to this person. I never went back to this person. But what I did was I just decided to go to college. Mm. I decided to go to college because I knew in that moment that I was going to be a single mother. And I knew for me, education has always been a value of mine. And I lost myself in those six years of being with this person. And I lost my values. And I had no clarity, absolutely nothing. I felt stuck. Mm -hmm. But I decided to get an education and I went to college. And that's where everything started to shape and shift for me. Mm -hmm. And I I'll share this one moment with you and, and we'll get a little bit more into it. It's that I remember going to, to I, I signed up for counseling to be a counselor. I wanted to be a counselor. After all that, I wanted to be a counselor. And I remember going to the front desk and it was night school at the time. I couldn't really go into a full time. So I was a single mother. And I remember going to the front desk and she, she looked at me and I said, hey, I'm here for counseling. I'm ready to sign up. And she looked at me and she's like, honey, we called you. Counseling's canceled. Like we're not running the program anymore. And I looked at her because I knew I decided I was going to leave this relationship. I was going to be a single mother and I was going to get an education no matter what I decided. And I looked at her and I said, if you don't mind, because I'm very respectful, I said, can you look down at your sheet and find something for me? She looked down and she said, okay, there's a course for addictions. So I learned about mental health. I learned about substance use. I learned about all of the things that I was experiencing. I learned about the cycles of abuse. That's where everything started for me. Mm -hmm. And then from there is where I slowly transitioned into the agency. And there's so much beauty in here. I slowly transitioned into the agency. This is where my entrepreneurship started. And then from here, I noticed there was a lot of gaps on a macro level that I couldn't fill in a micro level. It, like, I couldn't even bridge the gaps. And like me as an individual cannot bridge these gaps. Like it is impossible on an individual basis for me to ever fill these gaps. So I decided to leave. And that's where my entrepreneurship journey really started. I said, Let's go. Let's play. I knew since I've been a child that this was meant to me, for me, for us. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And thank you for sharing all of that. It's so incredible. Like, humans are so resilient, you know? And, like, the things that we move through and the things that we just, like, continue going and having, having Cohen, your yeah. son, like, to have that, that reason to continue going on and to go back and go back to school and really, like, follow that. But it's interesting that you mentioned that that desire and that drive was deep within you right from when you were a child. Yeah. 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 You know, it's funny. I took uh, entrepreneurship in high school and I didn't really connect thoughts, but I remember this, this gentleman, very looking gentleman. I remember this gentleman, he was a teacher at the time and he was an entrepreneur. He was living the life that he was teaching. He was, he was showing how he was like skydiving and he was traveling the world. Like he was teaching a class, but sharing his story so you know information is beautiful don't get me wrong yeah. but i was embodying the life that he's teaching yeah. and I knew like that was just another reminder that this was for me i was like that life that he has it's not about the things it's about the experiences like i was brought here to create those experiences for me for yeah. you for all of us yeah right I think that's really what opened me up. You know, I think we get those moments where it's like, whoa, okay, whoa, whoa, opening up the aperture, awareness. It's like, oh, okay, okay, that's, oh, that's possible, right? And it's just deciding and deciding and deciding and deciding from there. But yeah, it did start as a child, but I've gotten those hints throughout my life that this was in fact for me. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And so what did that look like for you when you started kind of getting into it and you started when you made that decision? Like, what did it look like from there moving forward? Yeah. So going back to social work, when I said I couldn't fill in those gaps on, on a micro level is, you know, there was a lot of things that I was experiencing and that I didn't really um, align with. I guess I could use that in, in regards to my values is how they were treating people on an individual basis and how there was a lot of status because I have a master's, I'm better than, and there was a lot of, you know, I guess, I guess we could say ego, but I just didn't feel like I was, I didn't feel like I fit. I didn't mm -hmm. fit in. You yeah. know, when I had this conversation for me, I really want to be intimately seen. I want to be bare naked. I want to be vulnerable. I want to have those deep conversations, especially with people that I work with. Like, what can we do for these people that are experiencing domestic violence? What can I do for these people that are experiencing substance use? Like, what can we do to create programs to improve the community? 
So what, because of all of that, nothing was shifting, nothing was shaking. So I decided to, uh, that's when I decided to transition over into isogenics. And um, I found isogenics and I, and I feel like that putting my feet, I call it putting your feet on the, you're really mm -hmm. finding it, you're wiggling, you're putting it in. And I was just, you know, testing it out, kind of stabilizing it, seeing if it would work, it would not work. You know, I would say life is like a, us being a scientist. Life is also very intelligent. But, um, you know, as I was putting my feet on, I think I really community, but I got to decide what that looked like right? The individual basis, the micro basis, because I knew that I could make a massive impact in these people's lives. And my zone of genius is community. My zone of genius is absolutely community, really coming in, allowing them to feel seen, allowing them to feel bare naked, to feel, you know, as if they can share their truth, not feel that sense of judgment where they can feel that, that feeling of freedom. It's like, this is who I am. Welcome me no matter what. It's not about fixing me or finding me. It's about me showing up at as my wholeness mm -hmm. right? I think that's what I love you Leanne <laughs> I'm beautiful <laughs> and you know and I think that's really what supported me so for my Sogenics, you know I was in there for quite a few years and I, I built a community Laura you know that like I built a, a sustainable community but there was still something in me that was like this I, I really deeply wanted to understand coaching in a different way yep. Found for me, Isogenics, for me in particular, beautiful company, still use the products, didn't really support me in the coaching aspect. They did have a lot of resources, they did have a lot of support, but I knew, and you know, this wasn't for me, my stomachs. I, it was a good year where I was just crying and I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, I've built this community, I've built this foundation, either in the mud, right, but stuck. And I'm like, I don't know where to go, right? I don't want to leave my community. I don't want to leave these people. Like, I've built this over quite a few years. And, you know, it took it took a while for me to to leave. It took a good year. And, you know, and, and I decided, and it wasn't an easy decision because people thought that I was leaving them. And there was a lot of conversations that I had to have with people out of respect for them, out of respect for me, out of respect for the community that we created as a collective, right? We co-created that together. And um, that's when I slowly found Alyssa Nobriga. I know you know who she is. She's a beautiful, incredible woman. I listened to, this is where it happened, Lori Harder, anyone who knows her, I was um, one day, you know, crying <laughs> by emotion. And I was like, I just, I'm done with this. I don't know what to do. Like, I just asked for a sign, right? I asked for a sign. I believe in the universe. So I asked for a sign. Whatever you believe in God, ask for a sign. So I asked for a sign because I was feeling stuck. And I don't believe that we're stuck. I think that we just need to ask more questions, right? We have to ask more questions. So I asked questions and it came to me. Lori Harder came and I listened. Cast. And Alyssa Obriga showed up in her essence, her core essence, the way that she spoke, the way she talked about entrepreneurship. It was, it was the tone of her voice. There was just this elegance, this freedom, this welcoming, this knowing. And Laura, you know this. You know that's about her. You're like, oh, like there's just, she's <laughs> incredible, right? You know she's embodied her work. There's so much beauty and intelligence behind her. So from there, um, I found her. And I didn't even think twice. It was a link down below, and I signed up for her program right away. And I'm like, this is $1,111. Let's go. Credit card, put it down. And I signed up for that course. And a year later, she, uh, she announced her method certification program because she's been an, an entrepreneur for 18 years. She was a therapist, transitioned into um, a, a coach. She embodied it. And I found that, and I was like, let's go. She's like, let's get on a call. Mike. We don't need to get on a call. I know I've known this has been my calling ever since. And I'm going to tell you, it's never about the certification. It wasn't, you know, when I, and I want to be very honest, when I started the certification, there was a lot going on in my life. And Laura knows this. She was a part of my life then is that I was, you know, COVID hit. I started a mastery certification program. I had a newborn baby. My son was homeschooling. My mother, who is my heart and soul, show her because her legacy, she's right here. I love her. Mm -hmm. she, but I, everyone who's in my world knows who she is. She passed away. My, in, I, I'll share this because he's okay with it. You know, my, my partner wasn't really doing well with COVID. He had a lot of fear of anxiety. So I, I, I was experiencing a lot. And people don't even experience what I experience in five years, let alone three months. So I was taking on all of this energy, 
I was taking on all of this responsibility. I didn't even allow myself to grieve because I had no idea how to because I was showing up for everyone else but myself. And what happened as a result is my body collapsed. My body collapsed learning about somatic body integration, because I didn't give myself the time and space to actually embody it, I collapsed. Mm -hmm. And I remember this happened at 3 a.m. It was 3 and I remember being by the toilet. And I'm like, oh my God, I have COVID, I have COVID. It was, it was in March, so we didn't know what's going on. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, what's going on? I'm freaking out, I have a newborn baby, mom's passing away, it's, it's insane. They come in and, and they look at me and they're like, just having a panic attack. <laughs> you just, you need to slow down, like slow down. And I'm like, that, that changed my entire world. Mm. That changed everything for me. That was another decision. And I don't think that you need to be in a state of drowning or to decide that you need to feel and do better for yourself. But at that moment in my time, because I was taking on so many bricks and it was just literally pushing me down, I say it's like resistance, like a ball pushing you down. And I just allow myself to go with it. My body just exploded. Yeah. And you know, that's what really changed everything for me for entrepreneurship. That's when I, I'm gonna embody this work. I'm gonna show up. I'm gonna grieve. I have no idea how to grieve. I have no idea what that even looks like. I am so scared <laughs> to grieve. <laughs> And you no, know, but that that happened about two, I'd say two years ago, right? Maybe about a year, two years ago when that happened. And ever since then, you know, it's it, we've had our ups and downs. You and I have talked about this, right? Entrepreneurship isn't easy. Where we can go into this space. There's been a lot of ups and downs, but I think that the important thing, if anyone's watching right now, and is thinking about being an entrepreneur, is an entrepreneur, is it's important to refine that we are always refining right? That's the thing is we don't understand that we don't go into entrepreneurship and it's, it's a straight path. So, you know, knowing that there is a path, but there's also risk to this path, but there's also a beautiful adventure that is attached to this path. But many times people are scared of the risk. So you are, if you are scared of the risk, my question to you is what is your relationship with the risk? What is your relationship with risk in general? What is your relationship with an adventure? Because, you know, entrepreneurship offers so much freedom if you choose to allow it. It is a conscious choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talked a lot. <laughs> That's okay. That was beautiful. Yeah. And some of the big takeaways that I really took from that is like your body knows, right? And listening to your body and when it when it needs that that step back to do that refinement like listen to your body so that you don't get to that point it's interesting i was just sharing this with you earlier that it's like that's kind of where i'm at right now where i'm like i can see that my body is like really getting to that point of like redlining <laughs> like living on the edge right yeah. it's rubbing. Yeah. It's like okay laura you need to start cutting some things back and refining what you're doing and really embodying the work in order to do that. So for you, when that was, what did it look like for you to really fully embody the work? And what does that mean to you to embody the work so that you could get through that and continue on your entrepreneur journey? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I have to, sorry, I've watered me. I'd say practicing what you preach. Sorry, excuse me. You know, and it's funny because everyone asked me that question. What is embodiment? What is embodiment? You know, what I really believe is it's, it's waking up to your patterns and shifting them. Mm -hmm. It's waking up to your patterns and shifting them. And there's three, and I'll just say there's three different types of awareness, right? There's, there's the awareness and I'll change, I'll share with me on an individual letter is the awareness is that there's a pattern. You don't see it. Second one is there's a pattern that this is the hardest one to change. There's a pattern, but you see it, right? People, a lot of people know their patterns, but they don't see it. And then the third one is there's patterns, but they choose to embody it. This is scary. These two are really scary, right? But for me, I was in stage two for a long time. I'm like, oh, I see the pattern, but do I want to change it? Do I really <laughs> want to it? Right? Yeah. Because this is safe. And that's that's what I that's what a lot of people do is they stay, they stay in this state of safety, but what it's actually doing, it's doing the opposite of what they desire. Mm -hmm. So when we stay safe, we're actually not allowing ourselves to embrace fear. So that's what I've done a lot. I've allowed myself to to do the things that scare me. And does it ever scare me? But it's not the emotion that scares us. It's the sensations that scare us. Because we believe that we feel the sensations that we're going to be stuck in this perpetuated feeling. But it's often the truth, right? So when we actually have the courage, it's not about 
you know, I think they say courage over confidence. It's about having the courage to choose to step forward. We have absolutely no idea what this is going to look like, what this is going to feel like. But when you embody the sensations and you know deep down that you're, there's this truth and then there's this vision that you were meant for this, this is your calling, then you will take courage over confidence any day. So for me, it's just embodying different tools, you know, and not even just the tools of the path, but just allowing myself to feel, know that I'm whole. Knowing that you're whole is beyond any tool and beyond any path. Knowing mm -hmm. that we're all whole and we don't need to fix ourselves. We don't need to fix each other. It's just refining. It's refining our patterns and waking up to them. Because when mm -hmm. we can wake up to our patterns, we will create an entirely different life. We create more clarity. We create more freedom. We actually start to live in alignment. And alignment for everyone is completely different. But we know when we're on the path that feels good mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> the pleasure train let's all hop on the pleasure train right but it does it takes that courage yeah. to be able to get there and to be able to move through that resistance and move through that fear and really hanging on to that deep knowing that there is something else on the other side of that for you and it it takes resilience like it takes a lot to be able to move through that yeah yeah. And I'd say, you know, that's the most powerful and potent thing, because when you take courage over confidence, you really start to step into your power. You start your conversations start to, you know, shift. You, you see the world differently. You wake up, you wake out, you wake down, you wake up to a new identification. You yeah. know, what I mean? practical action in a way that really lights you up. It makes you feel alive. And you start to have intimate conversations with people like this, right? People that are on this live right now are here because they want this, because they see this, they want to change. They want a shift in their life. They're not here because it's just their, their, you know, Monday night and they're just chilling, having popcorn. They could be, but they still want, right? So mm -hmm not about taking big action steps because we all have big intentions we all have big visions right mm -hmm. but the most important thing is just breaking it down in micro micro movements mm -hmm. because the big picture that's where our nervous system starts to go like Ooh, and then we start to go back into fear and then we play yeah. small yeah and what happens when we play small is we're actually doing the opposite of what we want to do the path that we want to walk along mm -hmm. so you know i think it's really powerful to to realize that you know we're not alone and standing in our power and standing in our truth does take courage and it does take bravery but it's also important to align yourself with people that are doing the thing that you're doing so you know that you're not alone and i always say that there's a difference between feeling alone and being alone right you can be with people in your environment and you cannot be alone but you feel alone so it's important to find your community of people that hear you Right? that want to be intimate with you, that want to have those deep conversations with you. Because if not, then you're going to start being feeling alone. Yeah. So I think that's really powerful to understand is that it's, you know, circumstantial power is powerful. People mm -hmm. always say personal power versus circumstantial power. Circumstantial power is, is powerful. We talk about this in social work. Right, we know that it affects ourselves. Like someone said a quote once. They said, "Put a I'm going to say bad person. I don't like this word, but this was the quote. It said, "Put a good person in a bad environment, watch them change. Put a bad person in a good environment, vice versa, and watch yeah. them." Right. Yeah. So circumstantial power. Yes, we can hold that to an extent, right? But and we can hold our personal power to an extent. But we have to understand that our environment does affect the way that we operate as human beings. So yeah. if you feeling in a space in your environment right now where you're feeling stuck yes we can take our personal power back but it's also about just deciding make one decision decide what's the first step that i can do from here not get out of my environment but the first choice that i can make for me so i can start to feel just slightly good again mm. yeah, yeah. Huge. there's a lot of people in that transition moment right now where they're transitioning out of that and it's interesting when we go from something that we do feel confident in mm -hmm. and then we're in that that transition phase and that's where we need to shift from that confidence into courage and take those small action steps and that's where it's fucking scary you know yeah. that's where you're like oh my gosh all this imposter stuff comes up and i was just sharing this with you where i'm feeling that lately where i'm like oh my god i'm in this big transition and i'm like oh this is wild. And I've been going, like I said, like today, I know Melissa and I chatted about this briefly before, but today it was like one of those days where I was being 
tested hard to embody the tools. I literally did so much clearing on myself before this live. I like went for a run down to the beach. I, I sat down there by the rocks. I did a meditation. I cleared my chakras. I was like saying prayers and then I ran back. I came back. I like put music on. I had a good meal, had an ice cold shower, like so many things just to get myself in a state here. And even before that, I was still nervous before coming on here. I'm like, holy fuck, this is your first one in two years that you've done. And here we are live on Instagram, right? But it is, it's that like the little curve. So advice from people um, that you have, Melissa, for anybody who is in that transition phase from something that they're super confident in, they have that inner knowing that there's something big that has to change. They know what it is. They've got that big vision. Mm -hmm. What is your advice for that person that is kind of stuck in that in-between spot? Good question, because everyone's completely different, right? So I'm going to give a, a bigger uh, answer to this. You know, I believe, and I'm going to speak for myself too, you know, I believe that sometimes our body aches to slow down. And I said this to you, and sometimes our body aches to speed up. So we can see the big vision, but if we're going, 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 going in our life, maybe it's time to slow down and dial it back a little bit and ask ourselves those questions inner than outer you always go in first to allow yourself to be seen intimately with yourself and then outer because you know it's not about moving faster i don't believe it's about moving faster mm -hmm. you know those peaks we always want to get to the top but peaks are just moments right they're just moments in time we, we make a 5k month 10k month 20k month yay we celebrate ourselves and a week later it's like the energy is drained and then you have to go back and then you start all those thoughts start to come up. So it's important to not move faster, but believe faster and, and believing faster is really just about, you know, being around people like you being around people like me, but also about embodying the work, mm -hmm. really just being an embodiment of it. This is, this is the, the practical way of it. But you know, when it, when you're in the transitional stage, right. And I call this, the in between before the leap, right? When you're really doing the inner work and, and you're transitioning and you're deciding to make a new, you know, maybe you're, maybe, let me give you an example of me. Let me, let me make this more practical. I'm going to be very real right here. So there was a program that I was, that I put together. It's called the interrupted program. It was really powerful. And there was something I've never seen in the coaching industry before. In my opinion, maybe it's out there. I'm sure someone, you know, had it out there. I haven't seen it. Um, but what I did was I created a four month program. And within this program, I actually had speakers that are going to, they were going to come on once a month and they're going to speak and they were going to tailor it to what they teach. They were coaches. So I had about three speakers that were going to go on for four months and I was going to speak the last month. And I also offered uh, once a month coaching sessions with me. I offered training. I offered a community. Like this was only, I did four, four, four months for four months for one-to-one -one coaching, access to coaches. We're going to do a panel. Like I was just like, let's go service, service, service. Like I'm ready to give. What happened? You ready? This is good. This is the leap. What happened in this period was there was a lot going on in my family life. And just because you run a business doesn't mean your business is going to stop moving. When you stop moving, it will stop moving. But there's also some things that are happening in your life that you need to attend to and bring your energy towards, which means things in your business maybe needs to take a stop. Maybe there's refining. Maybe there's you have to pivot. I had to pivot. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't an easy decision for me because there was a lot of people that signed up for this program. So I had to decide. I had two choices. I, one, just give up and tell everyone, here's your money back. And that's it. And I just attend to this energy over here, right? Or the second choice was I sit down and I have these conversations with these women. And I say, you know, I don't, I, there's something happening right here in my life. And I say to them, you, you can have your money back or you can come to a one-to-one -one container with me and we can play full out. Like I just offered them more sessions with me. That for me was one of the most difficult decisions that I've had to make in my life, in my business. And you know, I didn't make it mean anything about me. I allowed myself to cry, allowed myself to feel the sensations. I went on the black bathroom floor. I just started crying, you know, because I knew that my family, everyone that has been in my life, especially my clients, know that my family is my number one priority. My family comes first, no matter what. My business comes second. And that's another reason why I love being an entrepreneur, because my family will always be here before my business. Mm -hmm. So when I had that conversation with these women, even though it wasn't an easy one, because they were all excited. They were getting a lot of value. They, each and every one of them, because of who I am, because of my integrity, because of how I show up, said, I want to be in a one-to-one -one container with you. Let's just do that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you stand behind yourself and your values, 
and you show up with integrity and you're vulnerable, like you allow yourself again to be intimately, intimately bare naked and vulnerable with these women, they will mirror that. And they get to decide if they want to be in a container with you or if they want to move on. But if you show up as your authentic self, you show up at your values and you show up in your truth, I'm telling you, anyone who's watching right now, people will become a reflection of that and they have, will have respect for you. And on top of that, they will share that with other people and more people will want to be a part of your world. Because if you're living in an egocentric way where you're trying to prove yourself in this type of industry, whether it's coaching or entrepreneurship that will last maybe a year two years maybe three but i'm telling you all of that will eventually crumble because people see you mm -hmm. people will feel you because when you show up like these types of conversations people will know who does the work like you can tell i do the work right you can tell my energy you can tell the way that i speak you can tell the way i connect the way i see people you know but if someone's showing up differently you can feel that and people are going to know that and that's what's important about entrepreneurship is doing, making sure that your values are 100% aligned with you, your business values and your personal values. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, incredible. And I guess like for that, um, I don't want to ask. <laughs> I know we were talking about the leap, the leap. Yeah. The edge, the edge. So do you want me to keep going on that? Yeah, keep going on it. Keep going on it. That was kind of deep. So, you know, what I'm saying to you is that was a growth edge for me. That's mm -hmm. what Laura was asking. Like, that was the growth edge for me. It was really uncomfortable. It wasn't about me adding stuff to my business. It was actually the opposite. It was about me taking away from my business. That was my growth edge for me. Because growth edge isn't about always leaping. It's actually about refining and taking things away as well. And mm -hmm. I, that's why I said it's really important to know, like, at that time, my body was aching to slow down. The other part of me was like, let's go, speed, interrupted, coaches, it's going to be fabulous. And life, because life always holds its intelligence, it's like, well, I'm going to show you what you need right now because you're not listening. So mm -hmm. let's dial it back. Let's attend to this area right now. And then we'll clean it up and we'll come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think too, like, I'm kind of like just reflecting inward on my own journey too. And I'm learning so much from this conversation because it's like, I shared that too, where it's like, I have so much stuff going on that I'm like, okay, Laura, we need to refine kind of what's going on. And <laughs> if you're anybody like me, it's like, I just get so excited about so many things. <laughs> I know you're like that too. And it's like, it, sometimes it gets to that point where I'm like kind of that red line where it's like, I need to get to that point. Yeah. And it's Interesting because in the past I used to like push myself way beyond that and not be able to recognize the signs in my body of mm -hmm. what it actually felt like until it was too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And th and that's the thing too, right? We push, we push, we push because society believes that if you do more, you 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 are more. Yeah. Right. Like, and I know this is like for the overachievers right now. Like, we always attach our worth to work. Mm -hmm. That's actually opposite of truth, right? Mm -hmm. That's just the ego because the ego, there was something that I said the other day and I said, our, us at our core is just a, our whole, right? It's our ego that wants to identify ourselves with work, right? It wants to identify itself with like roles and that's the problem, right? So when we start to operate like that, then we start to lose our true essence. Mm. So I that, like you said too, like I have those moments. I had that moment today. You and I had that conversation where I said to you, I said, you know, entrepreneurship's not easy. I know we're coming on here live and it looks beautiful and we're telling stories, but entrepreneurship, it, you know, it tests you. It, yeah. But as you start to evolve and as you choose to take those steps and stabilize yourself and have some sort of structure, that is when you start to build on it. It's like a building, right? You look at a blueprint and you start to create it. And you're like, oh, I don't want that room. I want to move this bathroom here, right? It's just like the shell of it. And then that's when you start building in it. Right? You start putting the art, start putting the couches, the kitchen. That's where like the energy work comes from. That's where the embodiment work comes from. And then that's where your house is, right? So it's so important to, to have a blueprint, to have stability, to have structure. And that's where systems come in. Systems are so important. And then when you walk inside the house, that's where you make your house a home. But we are the most, so when I, when I say this is we're the most important people in our lives. 
Like we are the main character of our own movie. Everyone else around us is basically just like villains. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but when we start to sit into our house and we do our own work and we sit down on the couch and we refine ourselves and we start to clean up whatever energy we need to, you know, what happens when we walk out of that house and everyone else is just filling in the roles is we start to operate differently. But if we start to sit into this house and our energy is icky, like I'm, I'm referring to our, our bodies, <laughs> but if we start to sit into this house and our energy is yucky and we don't clean it up and we don't do the inner work, that becomes a reflection of how we operate outside of our house. So, you know, entrepreneurs and coaches, I always say to people that are actually in my containers, like you do the work, like you're getting paid to do the work because you are. As a partner, as a coach, whether you're getting paid or not, you are. You have to look at it like that. You are the work. Mm -hmm. people, people pay for coaches online. It's very different, right, than it is offline. They do it because they see your embodiment. They see your growth. They're like, I love what she's doing, and I want to know how she's doing it. Because where I'm at right now in my life feels icky. I kind of feel stuck. So how can she support me in coming home to me? It's not about you being a reflection of me. That's farthest from the truth. It's about me coaching you on the path of embodiment so you can go home in your home, sit down on your couch, and feel clean in that energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, there was a little bit of analogy there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's, it's a great point, too, because when you kind of step into it, a lot of the work is unpaid, yeah. right? really show up in that and embody that, then it's obviously going to translate into where you're headed and what happens with what you're doing. And I'd love for you to share a little bit about um, when you're transitioning, obviously it takes like a lot of different beliefs, right? We've been programmed with a lot of beliefs that do not support the entrepreneur journey and they really support more of like a stable um, employee mindset. So I'd love for you, like with your clients, with yourself kind of going through it, like what were some of the upgrades of your beliefs that you had to acquire and what did you have to do in order to achieve that so that you could start aligning um, your business and, and your journey with those new set of values that were going to support you with where you were moving forward to? Good question. So I question them. Remember I talk about questioning them. So what I usually do is I'll sit down and I question beliefs daily. Like I sit down every single day and I question my beliefs. I'll write them out. Like if there's something that's going on in my head, I will write it out. And I'll be like, this is my belief. This is my belief. What fear is coming up for you right now? Right? Like I have a goal. Like what's your fear around being seen? Mm -hmm. What's your fear about going live? What's your fear about leaving your job? Simple question. And I'll just write out all of the beliefs. This is my fear. This is my fear. This is my fear. This is my fear. I'll do it to the point where like, I don't have anything else to say. Yeah. I'm Got it all out. I regurgitated it. It's down on my piece of paper. Let's go. And I may, I take the most charged belief. I'm like, what's the most charged belief right now? Like, like what, like just makes me feel disgusting right now. Right. Normal motion. So I grab the belief and I, and I sit it and I say, I write it down. And I say, do you know, without a shadow of a doubt that this is true? Yes or no. It's a do question, not a what question or a why it's a close question close-ended question do you know that a shadow of a doubt this is true my mind's like oh, yes evidence 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 i'm like nope that's not true that's absolutely not true because i have no proof in the future to see that that is true but the past shows some sort of truth i'm like no but i don't believe that. that's not going to happen again because that's not true mm -hmm. so i think it's important to sit there and ask yourself a very simple question what is the fear i have around blank what is the fear i have around blank write it all out grab the most charged belief put it down do i know without a shadow of a doubt that this is true and from there, what I often do is forgiveness work, right? Forgiveness work and acceptance work really just allows you to feel free. So one tool that I usually use, and I use this with my clients too, and I'll say, you know, if I take that charge belief, right? Let's just say I'm still working through it. And I take that charge belief and I say, I forgive myself for believing whatever it was I believed. I forgive myself for believing that when I go live, people are going to judge me. It's a very common one. And then underneath that, I say, but my truth is, mm -hmm. what is your truth, Melissa? And I'll get people in my containers to stand up in their, right, in their body. And I'm like, share your truth out loud. Say it out loud so you feel it. Because sometimes they're like, oh, my truth is, I'm like, that's bullshit. That's not your truth. <laughs> that's not your truth. I said, I can, I read your body language. I'm so good at understanding your body language. That is not your truth. What is your truth? Oh, you got me. And I'm like, well, what's your truth? Because <laughs> I don't, I don't. 
obviously I care what the truth is. I'm like, I'm not the one who has to go off this, this after a coaching session and live my life. You live your life. You don't need to bullshit me and tell me what your truth is. You tell you what your truth is. So then when you walk out of this container with me, you actually feel free. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, okay. I forgive myself for believing. They do it again, right? My truth is, and you can just see the power in these people because mm -hmm. that's the truth. Mm -hmm. The belief that they have been walking around is not true, but when they actually flip the script and they wake up to it, it's like, wow, this is my truth. Yeah. So what happens from there is I get them to do an aligned action step. Because this is important because real change is behavior change. I don't want to sit there and do affirmations all day, especially if you're not feeling it into the body. Real change is behavior change. So at the end, I'm like, okay, so let's create an action step based on everything that you shared, based on all your truths. And then they take an action step that aligns with them and their goals. So if the fear at the beginning was fear of being seen because coming on here, they're going to be judged. And their truth is that they're not scared of being judged. They know that this is their vision. This is their passion. They're just ready to share their truth in their heart. At the end, their, their live action set may be like, I'm going to go live. I'm going to do the very thing that scares me. Because, you know, I always say that the cave you fear the most is the cave that holds treasure. So as soon as you slowly walk into the cave and you find the treasure, you will feel free. So when someone is scared of going live and they go live and they just share a three minute live about their story, about their truth, based mm -hmm. on what I went through, this is my truth, this is my story, and they get off, that feeling is indescribable. That feeling is indescribable. I've seen women complete, not because of that, but a lot of things. I've seen women completely change in my containers, like mm -hmm. And night because all of that conditioning is just occupied that's all it is that's all it is it's not their truth but when they live into their truth and they wake up to it remember wake up wake down wake out mm -hmm. that's when they start to live differently move differently see differently it's like whoa this is truth this mm -hmm. is truth yeah and that truth opens up in the body and it feels expansive like, you know, when you hit that truth, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. love that. Um, do you want to just repeat those steps just very clear and concisely for everybody watching here and everybody in the comments? I would love to know what has been your biggest takeaway so far that you've taken from this conversation because there is so much here, <laughs> so much here. I know I'm going to be listening to this back and like, <laughs> take notes from all of your freaking genius. I just love, I love you. Um, so yeah, if you want to just repeat that back about actually going to your journal, writing down all of your fears, being able to call yourself out on what your what your beliefs are, whether it is true, whether it's not true, and then the forgiveness and all of that. Yeah. So this is a short sort of version. I usually do like a 45 minute one, but this is a good short version for you, right? You want to get get just in and out like five minutes every morning. Um, what is the biggest fear that I have around and then fill in the blank and then write out all of your fears, all of them. What is the biggest fear I have around being seen? What is the biggest fear I have around leaving my partner? What is the biggest fear I have around leaving my job? Whatever it is, fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. Underneath that, you just write out all of the fears, like all the fears, all the fears, all the fears. Take the most charged, most alive belief, and then ask yourself, do I know without a shadow of a doubt this is true? Yes or no? Don't get in the mind. Yes or no? Yes or no? That's it. And then underneath that, you say, I forgive myself for believing what do you forgive yourself for believing? What was that charged belief that you were believing? And then underneath that, you'll say, my truth is, well, what is your truth? There's a reason why you want to leave that job. So that will be attached to your truth. But when you say your truth, you really got to stand up and you got to feel it. I even encourage you to scream out loud. So this is the belief that I tend to do. There's also another exercise that I tend to do about embodying um, more of the sensations in your body and recognizing patterns and beliefs, but that's another day. But that the belief one, it's a simple exercise that, that anyone can do. But I also encourage you to, to take all the charged beliefs and do it with each one, like go through. If you have 10 beliefs around your fear, like bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. My truth is, my truth is, my truth is. Like you will just see a shift like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for explaining that. And with that, like you'll notice, I, I know, you can definitely write with this too. And from what you shared, when we're in that kind of employee mindset and we're do, do, do all the time, that's where we need to create space in order to start having these lifestyle habits within our morning routine, within our evening routine to actually sit down and do this, right? Because there's so many beliefs that we are there needing to crack in yeah. order to 
start shifting into that new way of being that's going to open up and expand things for us so that we can have that courage to then break through and to build that confidence as we kind of go through it. So you're just been amazing, Melissa. I love that you said that because it's true. Too. Can I share one thing there that I think will serve your audience? Mm-hmm. Because okay? mm-hmm. I know you and I just could go on forever. Um, <laughs> I know, right? that the, the employee mindset to entrepreneur mindset is like, pff, like big transit. Yeah. Right? So and it has like, been years for me and I'm still like, yeah, I still get yeah. fucking dragged back into it. I'm like, no, Laura, no. <laughs> wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. <laughs> I, I love that you said that. So I would do the same thing. So what I always recommend to people, right, is create a vision. Like it's so important. You know, it only has to be 50% of believable. Talk about it as if it's actually happening now. Like what does your office look like? What are you doing? How are you being with yourself? How are you communicating? Like what does your family life look like? Like it's actually as if you're living it right now. That's so important too, right? So after that is I would even encourage like action steps. I know this is never really fun, but it's important to create some sort of systems, right? Is to do it, put it in every day, 60 minutes. I love that you said that, 90 minutes. Two tasks every day, two things, but make sure the two things push the needle forward. So if you're a coach, for instance, and maybe when I coach coaches at the beginning, I always say, just connect with people, see people, show up on lives, right? There's different ways for for different things, but really just connect with your audience, be vulnerable, be seen, right? So it's important to like, if you have clients and you're brand new to just say you have one or two clients, because I actually have two nurses that are want to transition over into um, entrepreneur, as I say to them, like they only have, um, not only, oh my gosh, dial that back. They have two clients, but they have those on specific days, right? So their two clients are Saturday, their creative day is Monday, um, their inner work day is like every single day for a half an hour, and then they have like a strategy day as well. So make sure you're really, really in tune to your energy and you start to understand that as everything starts to unfold. Because if something doesn't feel right, like not everything's going to feel good in entrepreneurship, but if something doesn't feel great when you're coaching people side by side, you want to do 30 minutes too. trust me, is that maybe it's like, okay, maybe this doesn't work. Maybe I need to do a client on Monday and a client on Thursday. But my point being is make sure you at least do 60 to 90 minutes every single day, maybe a day or two off, obviously, but you want to live life. But yeah, I think that's really important. Sorry. I wanted to give that to your audience. I think it's so important because we make it so big. Yeah. Like, no, just 60 to 90 minutes every single day, every single day. Yeah. <laughs> now everything has an exercise that they can actually do for some of that time when you're journaling and stuff like that. Cause it's easy. Like if we're just journaling about all of our current beliefs and we're just revalidating all of our current beliefs, <laughs> right? that doesn't do anything. Right. It's so really challenging yourself. And I love how you mentioned that about like asking yourself those questions because in reality, like, yes, hiring a coach is going to collapse time with what you're doing but a lot of this stuff if you're just kind of wanting to get into shifting some of those beliefs like that is an incredible exercise for you to start doing yeah Um, you can start bringing more awareness to your behavioral patterns and then start shifting your behavioral patterns in order to get where you're wanting to go yeah yeah i love that melissa uh so i'm just gonna read through some of these comments here so sherry says what i don't own owns me yeah woohoo love that so much And Andrea says, love the part about micro steps and love that the darkest cave has the best treasure analogy as well. I love all of this. Yeah, it, it truly does all that, that shadow work of going back and finding those little wisdom and the little gems that we can mine them and take them into our present day life to be able to really like move forward and create all of the abundance that we want to seek. Um, So I would love to know um, if anybody wants to hop on live with us. Mm-hmm. Anybody want to hop on live to mm-hmm. ask a question to Melissa? Yeah, or a quick coaching. Up yeah. to you, Laura. Either or. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Or question. <laughs> Whatever. It's like, how long is this going to go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got no. Um... Oh, Amanda. I love that. Anybody wants to join us live? Don't be shy. I love the ear thing. Fine. Sorry, what were you saying, Melissa? Oh, no, I was just saying, like, when, when people aren't willing to face their fear, like, when we're trying to, like, protect ourselves, we really start to live small. Like, there's so much potentiality and so many gifts from people. But I also want to say one thing that you touched on before someone comes live. Um, what did you say? You said something. Yeah, so 
coaching does collapse time because what happens when we start to shift from, you know, from employee mindset to entrepreneur mindset is that we don't realize how many unconscious beliefs that we hold on to. So when we start to, you'll see, I'm just going to do a visual. When you start to like go into entrepreneurship, you'll start to see everything rise, right? People pleasing, the fear of I'm not good enough, um, imposter syndrome, um, the feel of not feeling worthy enough, people pleasing, um, fear of success, fear of failure. These are very common ones but you start to see these come al like alive but they're just unconscious beliefs a lot of them do as you know stem from from childhood right a lot of things and a lot of patterns but that's i agree with you like really collapsing time so a coach can take you through that so you don't sit into that because feeling not good enough is really going to affect the way that you operate like all of your systems right the internal and the external but i just wanted to say that because i think that was so good mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's um, when we kind of come from that close structure of being an, uh, an employee as well, when our routines look the exact same all the time, it can seem like a big, like there's that kind of that big shift of beliefs mm -hmm. that happens in there. But then once you get into like entrepreneurism, it, those things happen so much quicker because it's more of a creative process that you're in in order to bring that. So those, like I know for me, like I feel like every other day I'm having like an existential crisis <laughs> where it's like all these things are coming up and I'm having to work through them at such like a fast pace fast. that you learn to be able to shift these things at a lot quicker pace by implementing these things. And like Melissa said, like it's all literally the micro things that happen on your daily basis, mm -hmm. like what, your, what your lifestyle then becomes. And, and in order to be able to support that vision that we want to hold and that we see because that's reality, that's so good. Sorry, Laura. I just said I love that. No, that's okay. Go for it. No, I was going to say I love that because that's the embodiment piece. The holding is the embodiment piece. Mm -hmm. right? I love that you said that because like anyone who's into science here, because I love, I have the overachiever in me, but I also have the enthusiast, which I'm like, woohoo, fun. <laughs> you know, a pattern takes three to four months to shift. Mm -hmm. three to four months on average to shift. And, you know, I will bring this up quickly. And if you've experienced, let's just say trauma, right? Like coaches don't deal, obviously not deal, but coaches don't, it's not their expertise. In my opinion, I don't think coaches should, but even though I have a social work background, I still don't think it's okay. But if it does, you know, someone who's experienced a lot of trauma, which a lot of us have, there's acute, there's chronic, right? There's different types is what happens is it takes 3000 times for you to embody something to experience trauma, depending on the depth of it, in order you to shift or to change a pattern. So just keep doing it over and over and over wow. again. 3000 times. Yeah. And so what happens, I learned this in somatic body integration because I'm in training for is what happens is like, you know, when pressure hits, let's just say pressure comes into our life and we're just getting all this stuff just coming at us. What happens when we embody it is that the pressure just slowly leaves us because we react differently right? Our body holds the unconscious. Our body is the patterns, right? So when we embody it, we don't hold on to it. It's 3000 times on average, it just goes off us. So if something comes at us, we can deal with it. We'll show up We're like, okay, let's go. Let's deal with this. It's not about not feeling it. It's that the fact that you've embodied it over and over and over again, your body naturally organically just moves with it. It can easily adapt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so cool. That's crazy. I didn't know that there's 3000 times and it makes sense why everybody and I know for me myself it's been patience yes patience is one of those things it's like we must have patience and it's like I go I know I'm yeah I'm going in between like I'm so patient I am impatient and you're going back and forth and it's like no oh, yeah. It's yeah. patience yeah. <laughs> everything is happening in divine yeah. timing and yeah. trusting the process yeah so Andrea it. has a question here um Andrea yeah. I don't know if you want to pop on live and ask your question if you don't, I can definitely read your question and then we can have Melissa answer it and then I can answer as well. Mm -hmm. Give her a second to see if she wants to pop on live to ask it. She's probably like, I should ask. I'm not coming on. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to, that's totally okay. So Melissa, the question was, when did you know when it was time to transition to a new vision or business? I've always, good question, new vision or business. Does, does she mean from, um, can't go live, oh my God. <laughs> does she mean from isogenics to coaching? I just want a little bit more clarity so I can really support you in this question. Andrew, if you want to answer that in the, in the comments there of more specific of that. Yeah, that was a good question. I love that. I just want to make sure that I really tailor it and support you in my answer. Mm. Can't go live, oh my God. She's like, no, don't you dare. <laughs> 
It's nerve wracking for so many people. I remember when I first started doing this, and like I said, even now, like I still get nervous coming on live. Yeah. Andrea says, from a job to an entrepreneur. Yeah, um, good, good, good question. Uh, you know, I was feeling stuck. I was feeling stuck for a very long time. And, um, you know, I was feeling heavy. I was in my head and nothing was going right. I just couldn't feel free. It was constantly looping over and over again. I literally just, just didn't have a grip of my emotions. I didn't have a grip of my thoughts. It was, you know, I can even say it was like mental health, but it was really bad. I was just looping over and over and over again. I didn't feel safe in my body. Um, and then I just knew that it was time. It was scary, but it was just an innate knowing. And it was innate trusting because there's so much uncertainty when you transition over. But just knowing that I was safe and I was protected with my family unit, unit sorry, because I do have a village behind me. Not a lot of people do. Um, you know, knowing that I had them as my village. And I also ended up having the mindset that I was like, what's the worst that could happen? Like, what is the worst that could happen? That's what, that's what really helped me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I sat there. Cause I'm like, I need to sit in this and just see what is the worst that can happen. And then I did the opposite. Like, what is the best thing that could happen? Mm. Right? Like just, I know it's a simple exercise, but just going back and forth. And I was like, what's the worst that can happen? Well, you know, I'm not going to have any money. I'm not going to be able to pay my bills. You know, then the flip side is that is like, well, you know, there's so much adventure you know, what's my relationship with adventure? You know, there's so much curiosity and play over here, which is something that I love. Like, I'm, you mm -hmm. know, and if you want to move to an entrepreneur, then it is. There's a lot of play and curiosity and there's so much freedom, right? It's not like external freedom, but there's a lot of internal freedom. And then I would also um, ask myself, like, who's here to support me? So I also knew who was there to support me just in case, which is really important, right? Like, if you don't have, um, or, you know, if you're transitioning, it might be difficult for you to invest in, you know, a mentor or a coach, but it's always, it's really important to know that you have someone, not a lot of people, because they're gonna have a lot of opinions, right? You want to make sure that you trust someone, you value someone who really has your back as much as you have your own and ask them, you know, this is what I'm doing right now. Just tell them, I just need your support. Cause there's going to be moments where I do fall and I just need to make sure that you're there as my net to support me. Mm hmm. Yeah. Huge. Oh, I'm all burned on the couch and pain and body. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know if that supported you. That was a really good question. Mm -hmm. Really, one's very different, but I think it's important, you know, to go back. Love that. Thanks so much. Okay. Awesome. And it's pretty common, like for so many people. I can share a little bit about my story with that too, Andrea. Um, when I was when I was transitioning from being a paramedic. Um, and wanted to leave into entrepreneurship. A lot of it was just so that it was, I could start my own healing journey. And I knew that that was kind of the direction that I wanted to go. But like you said, my body started breaking down. Yeah. I started, my IBS started getting really bad. My um, hormones were all over the whack. My emotions were just like, I couldn't cope. My mental health, like there were so many things that start showing up and our body shows us these signs and symptoms when things are out of whack, right? When our nervous systems are kind of capped and, and we're needing that change, our body tells us, right? Mm -hmm. We've got a guidance system within us. And when we're feeling that pleasure and that joy, that's when we're doing things right. When we're not, yeah. we, we start feeling that discomfort within our bodies. And that is that thing where something needs to change. And mm -hmm. for me, that was that big change where I was like, okay, there's something here that something's not aligning. And I knew I had to do something different. So that was kind of when I pivoted into what I was doing. And then I actually, I hired a coach right away, right after that. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of things kind of happening it seems to be in my life when things happen, they happen big and everything just fucking wipes everything out. I feel like I'm in that transition again right now. I don't know why this happens to me, but like when one thing changes, so many areas of my life That's change true. all at once. That's true. Yeah. It's a lot, right? But it's yeah. like hiring a coach and being mm -hmm. able to have that person for me to lean on and to learn all of these new tools and hold me accountable. Like mm -hmm. the accountability was huge, right? Because how like your family, your friends, your support system, like, really everybody has so much shit going on in their lives that you can't really hold each other accountable to the same extent as a coach will, mm -hmm. right? Like that's their job. You're paying them for this. So being able to invest in somebody to hold you accountable for it, for me, I needed to do that. I've had so many coaches. I worked with Melissa for three months a yeah. couple of years ago as well. And that was amazing. And it's like, even after that, I had another coach before that, when I first left my paramedic job, I had a coach. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, it's really like having those, those people that you can lean on to hold you accountable because we will give up on ourselves. Mm -hmm. We will, it, when those, all those doubts and those fears and all that shit comes in and your body starts contracting, like, oh my gosh, you just want to stay in bed and not get up. 
yeah. a lot yeah. of the time, right? So having that person there to be able to do that and having your family on board mm -hmm. to be able to keep you going in that vision and in that showing up for yourself every single day as you continue to build that because whatever the vision is that we see long term, it's like it chances are it's not going to look the way that you think it's going to look. <laughs> Like you think it's going to look one way and then you're like yeah. so shocked that it isn't. And you yeah. just release control and just live in the present moment and flow with kind of what's going on. But that's what it was for me, Andrea. It was just like that full body kind of breakdown nervous system kind of tapping out for me to be like, yo, something big needs to change here in my life and hmm. something has to, to shift. And I knew that what I was doing, I didn't see it as a long-term future. Mm. That, it, that mental health wise, lifestyle wise, the shift work, all of mm. these things for me, just wasn't something I wanted long term. And mm. I knew entrepreneurship could give me that freedom. It could give me time with my friends, my family, my loved ones. It could make me be able to allow me to prioritize my friends and family over. Mm. So I didn't have to keep missing Christmas dinners and mm. all of those things. Like I get to go home now this weekend for Easter and I just get to go, you know, my had her baby recently and I got to go home and be there when she had the baby like she did a home birth and I got to be there for the whole thing to like witness it and be there and support her and just spend time it's like all of these things were things that I would never have got the opportunity to do if I was still in that in that work environment and <laughs> it's really just hanging on to that vision of what it is that you want because for so long it's like that's not what my life looked like mm -hmm. now it's like it is showing up that way because of the consistency yeah. It's been, what, like three years, I think, since, yeah. Yeah. since I did that. And it's like, it's crazy. So yeah, I just really listening to your body and following that little, that voice that's inside of you that is like, go for it. And just keep getting so, resources and support so that you can keep moving forward. And anything's possible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know, what you said too, you know, if you want to give the example, what you said, like mental health, your body, because it does the whole the intelligence, but it's, and I could get the analogy too. It's like pushing down a beach ball and expecting yeah. from it, right? You just push it down, push it down, push it down. And you're like pushing it down, pushing it down, pushing it down. All of a sudden, <laughs> like you just burst, right? It's like, okay, just allow it, just allow it. And what happens? Everything, right? It's like the vast spaciousness, right? It's a different feeling. But when we start pushing against something that we're meant for, and it's just more contractions, more fear, it's more anger, more frustration. And our body can only hold on to that for so long. And when you suppress something and you put something under a rug, eventually when you throw up that rug, everything's going to come out, right? So okay. I love that too, just, just the innate knowing. And sometimes it does get to a point where we have pressure, 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 and our body does break down and, and, our, and our mindset, right? And hopefully it doesn't get to that point for everyone, but sometimes it does because us human beings are very scared of change. We believe that change is actually a worse pain than the pain that we're actually experiencing in the moment, which is farthest from the truth. But, you know, when people have pain from the past and they have been in those deep, dark moments and many moments, they believe that the exact same pain is going to happen in the future. So why not stay in this space where they feel some sort of safety? They almost normalize it mm. instead of actually like just taking the step forward and actually feeling what that feels like. So it's not, you know, it's not the thoughts that we're scared of. It's the sensations in our body that we're scared of. We can feel, you know, not feeling whole. We can feel all of those feelings, shame and guilt. And obviously grief is a lot deeper, right? But, you know, we can feel, if we feel those sensations, if we feel the fear, we can feel fear, right? We can feel not feeling whole. Like if we allow ourselves to sit, and I'm going to give your audience this, is that emotion only lasts 90 seconds in your body. Anything after that is a reoccurring thought. So it's called a Russian flush. It comes in, you feel the fear, just allow it to go, and then it leaves. But if it comes again, that's fine. Just move through it. It's just like wait, right? That's all emotions are. So when you move through them in 90 seconds, neuroscience is proving that, then you know, you're just like, okay, I'm on the other side. Now what? Let's go, right? So <laughs> no, I agree. I, I, it's, it's so true what you said. I love the example that you gave from your own personal standpoint too. Like, because our, 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 you know, we're a lot, we're similar in some ways, but are, we're different at the same time. But we both knew and we both had a breakdown. You know, yeah. I just hope that everyone's watching right now, they can just feel the feeling of fear not having to actually have the breakdown before mm -hmm. the decision to leave. Yeah. 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 I'm just so grateful that when I, when that did happen to me, I had the means because I had sold real estate to be able to take that time fully, completely off. But 
like I said, like you said, everybody's situation is different, you know, and not everybody has that luxury. Looking, yeah. I honestly wish that I kind of just took a leave off of work. I wish mm -hmm. I had a, like, and I, I don't know, I think it's just my ego that was just like, kind of, fuck this, whatever. <laughs> you know, where I was just like, yeah, yeah. get out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love Done that. With this. Yeah. But looking back, I do wish that I took the, the mental health leave and just like went off and like did my healing and kept my job part time for a, a little bit longer and stuff like that. But we kind of learn these things moving forward. But everybody's situation is, is so different. So, you know, there's value in all of us kind of sharing it. So, thanks for sharing yours as well, Melissa. <laughs> yeah. so to close this off i would love to know um if you were to leave this planet tomorrow oh. <laughs> tomorrow mm -hmm. what is the like life advice that you've kind of picked up this wisdom you would want to um impart on everybody who's watching this either live or on the recording that you feel mm -hmm. would be able to really serve them in their life moving forward i think it's important to stop trying to get there there's no such thing as there I think it's important to experience the journey and the micro moments. So, you know, compartmentalize those moments and actually feel them and take them in. Because when we get there at the top of the mountain, we have to go back down, right? The there is only happening in moments. So the there I can even refer to as a specific goal that you want to achieve. You want to achieve, you want to leave your job as an example. That's where you want to get there. But when you get there, there's a whole lot of things that you need to experience along the journey. I think that's really important, especially as entrepreneurs, uh, especially as coaches, especially anyone, if you're not in any of those fields, because, you know, we're always trying to get the job, get the girl, get this, get that. And it's actually taking us farther away from our truth, which is like who we are at our core essence, right? Living in our wholeness and experiencing life and what's happening around us. So many of us are on our phones looking down and we're not seeing what's happening in our moments, right? Our child walks Walking for the first time, or child doing something that we wouldn't that we wouldn't experience because we're looking down. Maybe your partner getting more intimate with him, putting the phone away, and just being there in the journey and being intimate and and connecting. I think we're losing that because we're trying to get there. So that would be the important thing that I would I would say because you know for me I had to learn that the difficult way. I don't think us humans have to get there to yeah. feel, but you know I think for me now my my other sons, so who those have been watching right now did manifest the man of my dreams after my first relationship. And I now have a second son, one's Cohen, uh, who's 11, and the other one's Logan, who's two and a half. You know, I'm a different mom. I'm a completely different mom. And, you know, I am so thankful that I raised such an incredible man who's my first son, Cohen. And now Logan, I'm, I'm in the moments. Like I have those, you know, I have, I experience anxiousness. I experience overwhelm. Like I'm just human, but I use my tools. I don't sit in it as often, but I'm really present with my children. And, you know, I always say to myself, what if I had $100,000 in my bank account right now? Would anything feel different? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to stress or burn myself out to have that much money in my bank account. Would I love that? Is there so much freedom behind money? Yes, if you attach it to the experiences, but not if you're not happy, right? So I think that's important for people to understand is that happiness isn't about getting there. It's about being there. Ooh. Huge. Happiness is not about getting there. It's about being there. Just everybody just let that sink in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Love that too. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being on here, Melissa. I love you. <laughs> Boom, Andrew says in the comments. <laughs> right? I know. You're, you're just incredible. And honestly, like just following your journey over the last little bit it is so inspiring. And you just keep going, you keep evolving, you keep moving forward. And the impact and the contribution that you're bringing to people's lives, it just inspires me so much along my journey as what I'm doing. And, and it's just really an honor to know you. And I'm just so appreciative that you took the time to come on here with, with all of us. And thank you to everybody is, that is in the comments. If you guys want to give um, Melissa some like some love in the comments there and just show them um, how grateful you are for, for this live and, and all of the value that she just shared. <laughs> I love you all so much. You're amazing. And Laura, I just want to, you know, before we jump off to just say, you know, just the evolution in you has just been so beautiful and it just shows other people what's possible because you go first. And I know you move with so much uncertainty and I know you move with so, so, much. <laughs> so much trust, right? But there's mm -hmm. so much 
much value and there's so much gifts that you are bringing to this world. So I just want you to know that I appreciate and value mm -hmm. you so much. because women like us, you know, when we take a step forward, someone else steps in those steps and someone else is in front of us too, right? It's just about women taking steps over and over and over again. And that's, I think, the beauty and what's happening in the 21st century is that we're really allowing ourselves to have a voice, allowing ourselves to be seen, to know that, you know, we can have it all without trying to compromise anything. And I think that's the beauty of this journey is knowing that we're doing this together, especially as women. So I just want to say I love you and I appreciate you. And I truly, you know, I value you as a friend. Yeah, thank you so much, Melissa. I'm like fully receiving that. And it's just like, yeah, it's been a journey, but um, it, it's amazing just being able to walk side by side. You know, like the hierarchy has fallen. Mm -hmm. Everyone's walking side by side and we're all rising together. And it just feels really good to be bringing that energy into the world because I know mm -hmm. that it, it's exactly what the world needs. So yeah, very grateful for you. I love you. Yeah, I love you too. <laughs> thank you to everybody that's on live here. Sherry says, so grateful. Sylvia says, thank you, ladies. And mm -hmm. you're so blessed to catch this live. We are so very grateful for you. And um, if you are on here live or if you're watching the recording, um, this will be going up on the podcast, which you can catch on all of the major platforms on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts. And it will also be going on my YouTube channel. And if you are watching the, re the recording of this and you want to catch the next one live and be here in the comments and pop on with us for the next guest live, then just check back to the Instagram at Laura Pluhuda and you can check out when that is. And Melissa, I'd love for you to share how people can get in contact with you to really connect with you and, and be able to follow your journey and tap into any of the amazing courses and programs and everything that you're kind of bringing to the world. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, so you can follow me, Healers Rising, in my private Facebook group. I am offering a lot more content moving forward, so I'll be there a lot more often. Uh, I am offering a free masterclass coming up. It's called edge i haven't actually shared it yet so it's about your growth edge a little bit like this but more into detail um you can obviously follow me on my instagram i'll follow you back and then you can find me on um, facebook right now melissa byers b-y-e-r-s i am oprah op opening <laughs> i'm opening a few spaces for one-to-one -one private coaching right now i'm not offering any programs yet but there will be some programs that are that are coming up soon uh the next two months so just keep an eye out <laughs> and i have done coaching with melissa before and you will get so much value and you will grow into like a person that you could never imagine doing work with with melissa so yeah thank you so much for all that you are melissa um i love you so much and i will put all of the info that you just shared down in the comments of of where this is so that everybody can be able to tap in and follow you and yeah that you're creating but <laughs> okay uh, okay bye everyone bye, bye melissa bye beautiful <laughs>